the slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up I don't ever slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna Hey team, I, I was recently asked uh, my thoughts on running for, for military members. Uh, a lot of you are civilians, but I know some of you that watch my videos are in the military. Uh, you know, I, as a lot of you may not know, but I spent 20 years on active duty in the, in the U.S. Army. Uh, I enlisted in 2002, February of 2002, and I retired in February, at the end of February of 2022. It was never my intention to serve 20 years in the military. Um, I, my, my father, uh, my dad reti retired out of the military in 1992. And so I've been around it my entire career. But I think if you're a military member, you really have to make sure you're prioritizing your time because you know you have morning PT, i.e. physical training. Um, there's so many other responsibilities that uh, military members handle. Not to discredit civilians, they have their own uh, pressures and responsibilities as well. But if you're in the military, there's a you know you have field training exercises where you go out to the field for like a week or, or two. I mean, or three. Sometimes it just depends on what type of unit you're in. Um, I've been in line units. I've been in support units. Uh, so I, I've dealt with both field training exercises, trying to train for marathons in the middle of field training exercises. Uh, an example of that, I remember uh, when I was training for the 2011 Monumental Indianapolis Marathon, um, I had to get up at 2 a.m. in the morning to do an 18-mile long run, and I was in the, I was, we were out in the field on uh, Fort Campbell, of all places, and the only light I had was the moonlight, and I still remember doing that run, and I had a tent duty at 5 a.m. that I had to report to, so that's the reason why I got up at 2 a.m. to do the 18-mile run. And my battalion commander uh, reached out to me the, the next morning. Somebody caught wind of it and told, told them. And he said, Nate, what on earth? did? Why didn't you take a battle buddy? In the military, we say battle buddy is somebody that you always go with. Uh, if you're traveling or if you're, you know, obviously in a, in a war area, uh, you always have a battle buddy just to protect you in, in, in case something goes down. But there was nobody that was going to run that far with me, so I had to get the work done. Okay, again, it's prioritizing your time. You have to decide how badly you want success, uh, it, whether you're civilian or military. But in the military, you have to dis you really have to dictate how badly you want success in in your particular training. So he caught one of it. I said, "Sir, you know, he was a lieutenant colonel. I was a captain at the time. Uh, it's like, sir, who who was going to go with me? <laughs> he just laughed at me. He said, "Why didn't you take a battle buddy with you?" I was like, "Sir, who's going to go with me?" So. Again, if you have field training exercises, if you have responsibilities to handle, there's 24 hours in a day. You have to, you know, compartmentalize like Joe Vigil says, Dr. Joe Vigil says, if there's 24 hours in a day, you compartmentalize and, and to, to fit everything that you need to get done. Okay, if you have a, you know, if you have to report to physical training in the morning, do that physical training, the PT. In most cases, you're not going to do the types of physical training that you really want to do, especially if you're a runner. If you're if you're fast enough, if you've got a perfect PT score, in most cases, company commanders will allow those particular soldiers to do their own training just based on the fact that they can score such a high a AFCT. Um, or earlier on, and the majority of my career was a the APFT, if older athletes, uh, soldier athletes. You already know that. Uh, but the new AFCT um, or the new ACFT, Army Combat Fitness Test, uh, if you score high enough, the, your commander will be able to do that. So I just think with, with military, in terms of running for military members, uh, you always have, you know, in a lot of cases, run during lunch. Okay, I would do that. I would do my PT in the morning. I would do, sometimes I would run during lunch, and then I would run after I got off work. I would run sometimes three days, uh, three times per day uh, in some cases, and it would only be a, usually about uh, twice per week. But I think really it just comes down to your discipline level. I mean, we as military members, we we, we have to focus on uh, the mission in terms of what it is we uh, we want to do, whether that's completing a college degree, whether it's dropping five pounds, whether it's getting faster on the two mile or of that or of our combat fitness test. Um, but really, 
the military is supportive, but it doesn't care if you want to qualify for the Boston Marathon or if you want to earn an Olympic trials qualifying standard or you want to become a member of the U.S. Army World Class Athlete Program like I was. I was very fortunate to, to have been a part of that program. But I had trained so many years. I started training in 1992 as a high school freshman. Uh, I ran through high school. I ran through college. And I continued to train after I got out of college. And then I practically ran very competitively. I ran at the elite level even when I was in the military. I was training for races even prior to getting to the U.S. Army World Class Athlete Program. I was on numerous U.S. Army the all-army teams for cross-country. Uh, many times I qualified for two uh, World Armed Forces cross-country championship teams. Uh, we went to Switzerland in 2005, and I went to Tunisia, Africa in 2006. So I'm not saying that to impress you, but to press upon you that really the sky is the limit to what you want to do. Even as a, a military member, if you're in the military and you want to get faster, you're going to have to decide how badly you truly want to do this. Okay, there, again, there's 24 hours in a day. You have to compartmentalize all of the things you need to get done and just prioritize what's the most important thing. Okay, if I have to do a long run and I have to go out to the field, hopefully you have a very supportive command team that will let you train. Um, and if you don't have a, a battle buddy, okay, explain to them what you're trying to do. And in most cases, I mean, a, as a company commander, if you have a, a supportive command team, in some cases, they'll let you do that, okay? I, I didn't really have a choice when I was training for the 2011 Monumental Indianapolis Marathon. I mean, I was really had a lot of challenges along the way. I ended up running, uh, placing fifth in that race, running 226.42, which is my second fastest marathon. And um, looking back, I was as fit as I ever was going to that race. Um, you know, I had done a 20-mile a, a long run five weeks out from that race in an hour in 50 minutes and two seconds, averaging 5.30 per mile for that 20 miler. And uh, and I was doing that all throughout a military work week, okay? Uh, I only had one time where I was training full-time throughout my racing career, and that was when I was with the U.S. Army World Class Athlete Program. And now, currently, as a retired military member, I can practically train when I want. Um, but again, it really just comes down to your 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 drive, your motivation, Okay, you, if you're in the military, you're already driven, you're already motivated, you, you already know what it takes to get outside of your comfort zone. Um, I do wish there, you know, I wish I could wake up and, and the need for the military was not even there. Our profession wasn't even there. You know, I wish the whole world would just get along. We get along with each other. We could stop fighting. Uh, bankers could stop getting rich off of these wars and stuff. But, um, Military members, I have the utmost respect uh, just for the drive and motivation, um, the the willingness to to do to work with teams and to work outside of just being an individual, but to work as a team to get a goal achieved. Okay, so I think just if you're in terms of running for military members, um, prioritize your time, focus on what types of uh, goals that you have. Maybe it's to run a faster 5K. Maybe it's to run faster on the two mile of your your uh, your combat fitness test. I did create a course for athletes, uh, military members, firemen, um, any police officers. If you're in the police force, I created a course for athletes uh, that are in those professions, military members. Uh, that are trying to get faster over the two mile distance. So whether you're in the Air Force, whether you're in the Space Force, the, the Coast Guard, the, the Navy, the Army, the Marines, check out that course on rundreamachieve.com. Uh, that is specific for athletes that are trying to run um, military members or, or government related athletes uh, that are trying to run faster at say like the one and a half mile up to the four mile distance. It's specific for two mile, but it can, it definitely the concepts that I teach in that course um, are really geared toward those those particular athletes, and that may be you. Um, but like I mentioned before, it really it just comes down to how badly you want success, and and really prioritizing your your activities throughout the day. Okay, if you're training for a marathon and you're working a uh, a, a regular work week in the military, it's not an easy process. Okay, it's one thing to be in high school or college and you're training for track and field races or. But it's another thing when you're working a full-time job, whether you're a civilian or a military member, and you're trying to fit all of your your training throughout the day. And you know, if you have children or if you're in in, in 
grad school, you know, in my case, I was in grad school. I've been in school practically. I just finished my doctor of uh, business administration degree, DBA degree, uh, just a few weeks ago. Okay. And I've been really in, in grad school throughout uh, since around uh, 2004. Okay. I finished my first master's degree in 2004, finished my MBA in 2018, went directly from the MBA program to a doctoral program, finishing it in, in just a few weeks ago. So, School is another thing too. It's an added stress that that adds additional challenges on athletes, whether civilian or military. Um, but if you have children, or you're in grad school, or you're you're in high school or college, just really focus on you know. But if you're in the military, just focus on staying as as, as focused as as you possibly can be throughout your your military career and. Challenge yourself. Get outside of your comfort zone. Try to qualify for the all army teams. Try to qualify for the U.S. Army World Class Athlete Program. If you can get into that program, you can train specifically 100% at your chosen event. Whether that's to run a faster 10,000 on the track and qualify for the Olympic Games or the Olympic Trials, go to you uh, go to ArmyWCap.com. I'll leave the link below this uh, video as well as on the screen here. Um, there, the specific standards you need to hit are on there. When I was there in 2007, I was there from February of 2007 to 2010. But when the standard, when I was there, I needed to run a minimum time of two hours, 22 minutes flat for the marathon. That was the US, USA Olympic Trials, USA Track and Field Olympic Trials B standard time. The Olympic, uh, US Olympic Trials A standard time at that time was two hours, 20 minutes flat, which was 520 per mile. Okay, I ended up running 219.35, qualifying for the Olympic trials, but I did it 28 days after the US, uh, the Olympic trials were held. So because I ran that time, that qualified me to come back to the US Army World Class Athlete Program. So it's a very difficult program to get into. Now you need to run, I believe, 218 flat to even be considered. And so, but check out the website there. All the specific time standards are there for you to, to look at. But I hope this is helpful for all of you that are in the military trying to, you know, in terms of running for military members. Uh, I hope this is helpful for all of you. Feel free to leave me a comment below if uh, you're in the military, uh, what types of times you're going for, or if you're if you have interest in, in serving in the military. You know, if you have any military related questions, uh, anything that's on your mind, let let me know in the comment section below. Uh, and, and I'll definitely respond back to you. So I wish you all the best in your upcoming races and training, and I'll talk to you guys and gals on the next video.